yeah, let's go ahead and get things started. Uh, we've got a, a, a lot of great people uh, joining in right now, and uh, we do want to get uh, started on time. And uh, this is a recorded meeting, so after the meeting, we will share, um, you know, this meeting with others. Uh, we've got folks on the on the call uh, from a variety of different roles in industry, from you know healthcare to um, you know finance within um, you know automotive and, and healthcare companies. Uh, to um, you know, service companies. Um, so, lots of folks that I think will benefit from this webinar. Um, my name is Ian McRae, owner of Ian Computers, and uh, what we really want to do is is show off some of the things that we can do with Office 365. Um, so, we've been working uh, to to roll out Office 365 for a couple of years, but it's it's a really big package, and uh, we've got. Thomas Kensinger on the line as well, and and we're all advocates for using the the features in Office 365, like um, you know OneDrive, uh, Teams. Uh, these are these are services that we can kind of dive into without a whole lot of uh, configuration or 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 workflow or custom um, uh, programming. But we also have on the the line. Um, Dustin Sitton, and, and he, Dustin is an expert uh, out of Baltimore, Maryland, and he, he services uh, companies throughout the, the, uh, the United States, and, mm -hmm. and, um, but he can also meet with you locally wherever you are in Virginia, and uh, you know, his expertise is really uh, taking these uh, configurations within Office 365 to the next level and uh, you know developing custom workflows and those types of things to to further automate your business so uh, we wanted to team up today and just show you some of the the, the things that are possible with Office 365 because the, the really neat thing with Office 365 like we've been chatting about here is that you already own the the tool so let's see what it can really do um, if we spend a little bit more time configuring it. So, Dustin, with that introduction, can you uh, talk a little bit more about your company, your background, and, and um, show us around? Yeah, absolutely. That was a great introduction. Thanks so much, Ian. So, again, my name is Dustin Sitton. I'm a principal at Insight Automation here in Baltimore, Maryland, um, but I'm in Virginia all the time. I stole my wife from Northern Virginia, so I'm there constantly with in-laws and other family. Um, what was I going to say? So my background, I was a straight up software developer for 20 years. And over that time, I ran some of the largest uh, commercial consulting firms in Maryland. Um, but over the past five years, I saw the sea change of software that I used to have to custom develop no longer really being necessary. There were these great, these great tools in Office 365, in Dynamics 365, another Microsoft product that competes with Salesforce um, that I could use to build uh, software so much faster. Um, I, I can use all the tools that we already own in Office 365 uh, to replace custom software, to replace people that are in Excel hell with something that's more um, manageable and easy to use and report on. Um, and even companies that have 17 great systems, none of which talk together, we can either replace all of them with one system or help glue them together using the tools in Office 365. So for companies large and small, um, you know, we have a team here of people that are all ex-software developers that have moved to what's being called low-code development. Um, and that's what we do. So we're here to help you unlock all the value in these products that you already own. Uh, and with that, unless there's anything else you want me to add, Ian, I'm going to take it away and get started. Good. That sounds great. Good. Great. Um, so I'm going to start out with uh, tools that I know that everybody's using today and just show you some stuff that's neat, uh, some stuff that might be actually really useful. Um, and then I'm going to move on into tools that hopefully you're getting ready to use. And then I'll go on to stuff that, you know, you'll be excited to use um, once you've got the basics nailed down. So crawl, walk, run. Um, and that's why I've got Outlook up on the screen. And I think we're playing a great game right now of let's hope I don't get an email that's embarrassing while I show the Outlook portion of this presentation. Um, <laughs> and, by the, <laughs> and by the way, uh, please feel free to interrupt me. Um, be rude. I love answering questions. I'm going to take some breaths in the middle of this. Um, but by all means, chime in. Um, 
But that's the plan, and we're going to touch just a little bit on uh, a large portion of Office 365 today. There'll be subsequent webinars, and I'll mention dates and times that we dive into some details for some of these other items. Or feel free to reach out to us directly. Oh, good, another email. Um, that's not scary, uh, you know, uh, or, or, you know, feel free to reach out to us directly um, if you want to learn more. So the first three things I'm going to show, I'm going to have three items in uh, Outlook. The first is I've got two email accounts in this Outlook window, two separate email accounts. One is my work email account, DSitting at Inside Automation, and the other is my home email account, DSitting at Hotmail.com. Right, And the reason I've got both of these in here is not because I'm trying to impress you with that, but I want to show you how I sometimes schedule meetings. So I'm going to write an email to the home version of myself in my work account, and I'm going to say, let's get together soon. Dustin, I think it's time to review the proposal. Um, let's schedule proposal. Let's schedule an online, uh, let's schedule a Teams meeting for next Friday. No big deal so far, but I don't feel like going back and forth with him for the actual time. So I'm going to CC calendar.help, which is a Microsoft product that uh, is included in your subscription. And I'm going to send this email. And while we wait for Cortana to respond, she's going to help coordinate this meeting between the two of us. So my home self just got that email from me, but in a moment, hopefully, it's always a scary part of live demos, Cortana's gonna chime in and go, hey, I looked at Dustin's calendar, um, it looks like he's free Friday, and yes, I know next Friday is technically sort of a holiday, but just go with me. So while we wait for that to come through, um, I'll move on to the next tip, and by the time I'm done there, we'll get an email from Cortana taking a breath. Another thing I want to show you um, while that comes through is uh, insights. So as I read my email, I can see all of the things that I was saying um, about my emails, like, hey, in your emails, you suggested some tasks that people follow up with. You added some important people to some meetings. Um, I can also see some statistics about how much of my week I spent in meetings, how much of my week I spent uh, you know, answering emails, who am I talking with the most. It's really, really interesting if you start drilling into this to see who are the people that you're emailing the most um, how quickly are you getting back to them? You know, how quickly are they getting back to you? It can really help you figure out like, wow, like these are the people I work with the most. There's just lots of really nerdy, great statistics in here inside of my analytics, which is all based on what you've got going on in exchange. Taking a breath. All right, so hopefully by now, let's see. Do I have another email? Yep. So look, Cortana has responded to um, that email I sent, and now as my home version of me, hi, Dustin, I'm helping Dustin schedule a one-hour conference call for you both. Below are some proposed times when Dustin is available, Friday, November 29th, 10, 10, 30, and 11. Please let me know which of these times you, will work for you, and then we can go from there. So I'm going to reply to Cortana and say, Hello, Cortana. Let's meet at 10 a.m. Send. And I also could have said, um, uh, you know, no, this Friday actually doesn't work for me. What's his schedule like next, you know, the following Monday? And it'll start giving me dates for that. Um, there's a whole setting screen at calendar.help. That's the URL you should go to um, where you can say, uh, I want this much buffer between my meetings. Never schedule me, you know, before 10 a.m. You can set up all these rules as to how things should be scheduled for you. Um, but you can sort of use Cortana as your personal assistant to get your meeting scheduled. Okay. And then in a minute. That's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
hi, Dustin, no need to reply. Just letting you know I can post the following times to the other Dustin. You know what I mean? I found these available on your calendar. So in a second, oh, look. So now um, it's just put on my calendar, this meeting automatically. And this Dustin, the home me, just got that meeting request. See? So it's on my calendar and he just got the invite and I didn't have to do anything but CC Cortana for the first time. And it looks like since you used the Teams uh, online meeting tool, it even put the link in there and everything as well on how to. That's correct. It did. See, so right down here in the invite, now there's a join Teams meeting link. So nice. it's all configured because I said make it an online meeting. Um, you can also say I'd like right. to have lunch in Richmond. You know what I mean? And it'll suggest some restaurants and yada, yada, yada. It doesn't do as good at that, but it will try. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yes, so you could look at your, your insights, and if you're working a lot with, um, let's say, the scheduling department or something to get some of these things done, you might decide to automate, or you might you look at the insight screen and say, hey, I just need to have a meeting with, with John once a week instead of emailing all day. Um, yeah. So that could be really helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I, I absolutely think it's a really neat tool in the right, in the right, you know, situations, the right context, definitely play with it internally. Um, and you know, be bold, start using an external tool. It will impress people. I have fooled five people that, that, that was a real person they were talking to. They'll say <laughs> some really nice things. <laughs> um, where did you, where did you find her? She gets back to me so quick. <laughs> Um, now I'm as a last, uh, tip I'm going to show inside of outlook. So we've talked about this insights button and how you can do statistics and get reminders and things like that. We've talked about the CC and Cortana using calendar.help. Um, lastly, find time is a tool that's built into, uh, office 365. It's a product that Microsoft bought a couple years back. And honestly, this is the tool I use the most when I'm scheduling meetings. So I'll click, all right, or about to, I want to figure out a time to meet with a bunch of people, be it internally or externally. And I click this button and actually I'll pull up. Oh yeah. I got to add some people to this first. I'll say Laura and Krista. Laura and Krista both work at Insight. Um, oops, I didn't mean to click insights. I had insight on the mind. Um, I'm clicking find time. And now it's showing me because all three of us work here when we are available to meet for a one hour meeting on November 26th. Oh, it looks like there's lots of times available and all three of our calendars because of course, Microsoft knows. I'm gonna propose to them 11, two, four, and 12.30, even though I'm not quite available. And then I hit next. And then I say, yes, this is gonna be an online meeting. And then I insert that into my email. And I always delete this little bottom part because it looks cooler. Um, but the idea is I can send this off to all the participants, be them internal or external employees, not in our company. And um, when everybody has clicked this link and selected their options of which times they prefer, which times they can or can't do, this polling system will automatically then send out the invite. Now, Dustin, since you're a Microsoft user and I'm a Microsoft user, would we be able to do that even though we're with different companies or does it yeah. have to be internal? Yeah, no, this is, this is the tool I use because I'm a consultant. I'm usually co you know, co collaborating with people that are not in my company. That's why I like this tool so much. It's because it works so great with Gmail users, external users, people not in, you know, with, with my same email address. Um, it won't show me their availability like you just saw, but it will let me propose times that work for me and they can fill out this poll. They don't have to type in a thing. They don't have to sign up for an account or get a password. It's all seamless for them. You know what I mean? Um, so I'll send this actually. They're going to be very confused my two employees, why they're getting this right now, which just makes it more fun. But if I collect that select options button, see findtime.microsoft.com, and then it shows me vote for what you want. I prefer this time. I'm not doing this time. 
You know what I mean? And I prefer this time. And then once all three of us have chimed in and it'll give me the creator of the event, um, uh, updates as to when people are chiming in, um, it will then automatically schedule. And it really is just as easy as clicking into the screen. So there you go. Moving on. Sounds great. Great. Um, let's see. All right. Next, let's talk about something that hopefully you're using. If not, you're curious about it. SharePoint and OneDrive. Okay. Um, let's, everybody always asks me, Dustin, I've got OneDrive. I've got SharePoint. I cannot tell them apart to save my life. And I just closed it by mistake. Ah, hold on one sec here. Insight automation. SharePoint.com. So what is the difference between these two tools? Uh, they're both made by the same team. Um, OneDrive is meant to be your C drive in the cloud. Okay. So instead of storing files on your laptop, you should be storing them in OneDrive. That way they're automatically versioned, automatically backed up, accessible from anywhere. And of course, if something were to happen to your machine, uh, they're much more secure. Uh, multiple people can work in there, you can collaborate, but the, the, the point is when you put a document into OneDrive, um, by default, it's shared just with you. Okay, and you can share it with others, but it's your personal space. So if there are 26 people in your company, there are 26 separate OneDrives, right? Each of you has one. Um, SharePoint is your company's file share in the cloud, okay? So it's an intranet, it does some other cool things, but really there's only one SharePoint implementation for the entire company. It's your F drive, your X drive, whatever letter you guys have called it. That's the big difference between the two. And so there's a reason to use both. It's not a choice of one or the other. And then the next question that most people ask is, can I move content between the two? And the answer is absolutely yes. So, you know, you can take a document that's here like this, you know, Excel document that I've got and say, move to or copy to. And then all of these down here are SharePoint sites that I've created for various clients, be them real or otherwise. And I could say, yeah, I want to move this file into the general folder for this particular place. And now it's shared with the entire company because I'm done editing it just internally for myself. I'll take a breath. Good so far? All right. Thank you one question. I'm sorry to interrupt. Please. Um, what are the advantages to this or the difference between this and Dropbox? Because I know um, a lot of people here are sharing files through Dropbox. Yeah, um, that's a great question. Dropbox is a fantastic product. Um, my biggest issue with Dropbox is why pay extra for it? Because if you're paying for it, it can get pricey when you already own this. Um, you know what I mean? There's, there's no real advantages, especially if you're doing a lot of office based documents to staying with Dropbox, uh, versus SharePoint. I would say that three or four years ago, SharePoint and OneDrive lagged behind in the usability. Uh, compared to Dropbox. So at the time for a lot of companies that it was selected, I get it. But these days they're at parity in my eyes. So why pay extra for it? Um, there's really no compelling Dropbox feature that I've run across that makes me want to stick with it. And that'll be compounded when I talk a little bit later about this thing that you see on the screen that says flow. Okay. So I don't know if that's a satisfactory answer or not, but yeah. in my eyes, they're potato, potato. Don't pay extra for it. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was wondering. Um, I was just thinking that it seems like we could really take advantage of this. And I was just yeah. wondering if we would be losing something if we just continued using Dropbox and use this instead. Yeah, not in my eyes. Um, you know, I, I, I have a lot more people moving um, you know, from Dropbox to SharePoint and OneDrive than vice versa. In fact, any, you know what I mean? Because I, I show them, look, you already have this. And that'll compound as we continue on because these two places are the hub of 
content storage uh, for all of the Microsoft products. You know, we're just at the tip of the iceberg so far. When I show you some of the other tools, they all blend together. You know what I mean? Um, the next thing I'm going to show up to this is Teams, and Teams can use Dropbox, but it also just works beautifully, seamlessly out of the box with this stuff. So, you know, my recommendation is stick with it. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was going to say the SharePoint doesn't necessarily have to be shared with people within your network. I mean, we could also include people that are not like on site here. Correct. So for both OneDrive and SharePoint, you know, I'm looking at this SharePoint site. So again, I'm now looking at my F drive. I could share this entire list of documents with an external party. And I have a couple different ways I can do it. I can invite them. Mm -hmm. um, and get them permission. But I can also say, you know what, for this one file here, I don't need them really to log in. I just want to provide a hyperlink to this document. And anybody who has that hyperlink can edit it. Or anybody who has that hyperlink can um, uh, view it. Or I only want this document to be accessible for a certain period of time. I want them to be able to look at it, but not download it. So I've got lots of great options here, and then I apply it, and then I get a hyperlink that I can then say, you know, paste in an email and say, you know, here's a link to that thing, you know, external customer, you know, please take a look at the proposal. Or here's a landing page of all the content. They won't have to log in or anything to get to it. Wonderful. Thank you. I cool. Yeah. This is your going. So. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Another thing I'll show you in both of these tools, you notice there's a sync button here. So one thing I often hear is I would never use this, Dustin, because sometimes I work on a plane or I don't trust being always connected to the Internet. You click that sync button. And when I go into File Explorer, I'm sure this is familiar to everybody, not only do I have my C drive, you know, and everything else you'd expect. I have this area here that says inside automation. This is all the SharePoint sites that I have synchronized to my local machine. Okay, so I clicked that sync button and it made it show up here under this folder. And the idea is that anything that's synced here, um, I can access. Some of these files have a little cloud icon by them. I see them on my machine, but they're not actually downloaded to my machine because I haven't clicked on them ever before. Other files, I may say, you know what? Um, I want to always have a copy of this on my machine, no matter where I am. So I click it and it'll put it there. I can configure that. Are the files there by default? or only when I try to click on them for the first time, whatever. But you don't have to lose having the local access working in Word. And the great part is, you know, if you're on a plane working in a Word document, and when you get back to Wi-Fi land again, it will synchronize your changes with the document that's stored in SharePoint. Okay, and even if two other people we're working in that Word document, um, it will synchronize all of your changes together, which makes everybody, you know, super fearful. Um, I promise it works really, really well. Um, it'll do it paragraph by paragraph, you know. Another great reason to store this stuff in OneDrive and SharePoint is if you have two people working in this Word document at the same time, you'll see each other typing. As long as you're not working on the same paragraph at the same moment, um, you'll both be able to be in there collaborating together. This is great for, you know, big RFP responses, uh, working on sales documentation, working on a policy document, you name it. Dustin, okay. quick, quick question for you. Um, I know with uh, OneDrive, you get a terabyte of space. What amount of space does an organization have for SharePoint? Uh, for SharePoint, I believe it starts out with, what is it, uh, 100 gigs, and then each person in your company, depending on your plan, adds a couple more gigs to the pool. Okay. You know what I mean? So you get yeah. like 100 gigs to start, and then more with each person. SharePoint can hold up to 100 terabytes, and storage is relatively cheap. I say relative, meaning compared to the Dropboxes and uh, Salesforces of the world. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Dustin, how about uh, document revision? I think a lot of people are worried that a, an employee might leave, delete all their, their files on their, their laptop or in their OneDrive. 
uh, or you know they might accidentally save over a document in their in their SharePoint. So. Um, Great, great question. So a couple things in here. First of all, you can always right click on any document, click version history, and see, unfortunately I picked one that doesn't have one, all of the revisions. The revisions are created automatically by SharePoint just by you working inside of Word or Excel or PowerPoint or whatever. You don't have to say, I want to make a version. You can if it's some version of significance, um, but it's auto creating these versions. And if I had a couple here, I could uh, restore a previous version. I could compare two versions directly within Word if I wanted to do that. So that's one option you have. Your other half of your question is, uh, what happens if they wipe everything out, the disgruntled employee? Um, there's a recycle bin, right? And average users don't have access to empty the recycle bin. Stuff goes into the recycle bin. It sits there for 60 days. After that 60 days, it is automatically taken out of the recycle bin, and then there's a double secret recycle bin that only the admins yeah. have access to, and those sit in the double secret recycle bin for another 60 days. Okay? Um, so if you delete something on your own that you put in there, you can go in here and undelete it. But after that, um, I can come back in, so I can click restore. Um, I, the admin can go into the double secret recycle bin and add something back that way. On OneDrive, if an employee leaves, because every employee gets their own OneDrive, your administrator or Ian uh, can um, see what was in their personal OneDrive folders. Not on a daily basis, um, but uh, if they leave and we need to go back and unpack what they had in there, it's very doable, very possible. Okay, take another breath. Two other uses for SharePoint, and then I'm going to move on to um, my favorite topic, uh, which is Teams. Uh, you can store basic lists of information in here. I'm going to give you a little bit of a teaser of stuff that we're going to be talking about later. You'll notice that this is just a list. This isn't documents. This isn't content. Um, I've got a list here of volunteers. I talked earlier about how all these Office 365 tools work together. I'm going to talk about these two in more detail in a few minutes, but Flow, which I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about later, is in here. I could put buttons on this screen to do magical stuff that we'll go into more later. And Power Apps, which is another thing we're going to touch on later. Power Apps is Microsoft's replacement for Access. You can use it to build applications drag and drop like you would in Microsoft Access, um, but unlike old school Access, this works on the web, it works on a phone, it works on a tablet, but the reason I'm bringing up right now is it can also replace pieces of SharePoint. So if the way that somebody edits the screen, if I wanted to change what you're seeing right here on the side, you can't see the camera right now because I'm talking to all of you, but I can embed applications inside of SharePoint using this tool. I can embed applications inside of lots of different pieces of Office 365 using this rapid application development environment. So little bits of pieces to come, but I wanted to show you that SharePoint is more than just storage. OneDrive is just storage, but SharePoint can be a place to store a roster, a directory, um, a list of things, dates that things are due, um, you know, a task list, and we can customize how that all works for an organization. Lastly, in SharePoint, I wanted to show you a new feature called a project hub. Most organizations have a bunch of SharePoint sites, maybe one per client, one per department. There's a new ability called a hub SharePoint site, which is your new intranet, and it allows you to roll up across all the little SharePoint sites you have, uh, all of the news. So instead of having a dedicated area for news, you could have some news for HR, some news for business development, some news per client, right? And then all that news rolls up into a hub site. So this news is from one site called Comstore C, and this news is from GovCloud A, but all the news is rolled together. Similarly, if you've got calendars, when are things due for this client versus that? You may give each client their own SharePoint site, and then um, you, know, you have a task list for this client, a task list for that client, but if I log in as a user, I see all my tasks rolled up into one place activities like who's uploading documents 
that can all happen rolled up in one place. So even though, you know, in a couple of minutes, we're going to move on from just one SharePoint site, you can roll stuff up. I'm a certified SharePoint expert, so I'm going to switch off of SharePoint unless people have other more questions, but I just wanted to touch on it as well. There's a lot of power, a lot of features in this, and you can really get organized quickly using that tool. Taking a breath. Okay, good. Next, let's talk about Teams. Um, all of you are either have Teams or Microsoft is installing Teams on your machines, whether you like it or not. Uh, the question I get most about Teams is, uh, you know, what is it? This looks a lot different from Skype. What the hell do I do with this thing? Um, I will explain. Um, teams is a replacement for Skype, and it's a way that you can chat with, you know, other employees, but it's way more than that as well. So here you see, I'm just having a conversation. I didn't mean to start on the screen, but you know, with some folks within the company. But then I have also a list of teams and different organizations do this differently, but actually I'm gonna go to a specific team here. Yeah, I wanna go to this one. This is a fake team I created called Comstore C. Um, we organize in our company that we make a team per client and then what's called a channel per uh, project that we're working on with that client. And the idea here is to create a place to collaborate that's a single pane of glass for all the products you use, not just Microsoft products, where employees can go to see everything. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So first tab I've gotten here is conversations. I'm talking with um, other employees in this chat window about this particular client, about this particular project. Okay. And what, Dustin, why do it here versus email? We all talk over email. Why would I rather do it in here? The reason you do it in here is if you do it in an email thread, and then a new employee starts three months in, they have no context of how we got to this point. They weren't on those email threads. They have no way of seeing them unless you forward them all those old emails from three months ago. If you talk in here, then anybody who rolls on or off of the work or wants to see the history has one unified place to go see that history. I'm not saying it replaces email, but when you're having internal discussions about a thing, I would argue this is a better place to do it. You can reference Excel documents, maps, you know, all sorts of stuff as you're talking about something here. You can call to people's attention by saying at Laura. Oh, of course, I picked somebody that's not in here right now. That's not a part of this group, but you can reference other team members, that sort of thing. So that's what the conversation side of this is for. Taking a breath. I haven't lost everybody, have I? Okay, good. The second piece is... I can take all the files that I just showed you in SharePoint and have them here inside of Teams. So this is where I get into that, what I was saying earlier about a single pane of glass. Instead of me going to SharePoint, going to OneDrive, going to email, I can see everything I have related to this company, this account, whatever your terminology is, in one place. And I can work with these files just as if I was inside of SharePoint still. And I can even open in SharePoint, and it'll take me right there. But there's, no, frankly, no reason for me to come here anymore because I can see all of this directly inside of Teams. Same holds true for another tool um, called Planner. Planner is another thing you already own inside of Office 365. It's a way to manage tasks. And there's a bunch of task management tools in Office 365. We could have a whole webinar about when do you use to do, when do you use Planner, when do you use uh, Microsoft Project, when do you use something else, right? But the idea here is this is a project management tool, and this plan is specifically about Comstore C. And if I click on one of these tasks and say, I want to reference a document as part of this, and I click SharePoint, once again, here's that same list of files that you just saw a second ago. And I can say, I want this estimate to be a part of this task. And instead of me making a copy, now it's just referenced as part of that. Really, really powerful. And that's why I like using all of these tools together versus picking and choosing, you know, a Dropbox, a Slack, you know, the, the pain of integrating all these things is much more difficult. Am I losing everybody? Is this good so far? 
<laughs> um, you can, Looking you good. can, good, great. You can also create more tabs, you know, a tab to store all of your notes in one note. Um, let's pretend there's one particular Excel file that's super important. We can make that a dedicated tab of its own. And the idea is once you learn what are the things we do for every client, every project, every, you know, team that we need to make, you can standardize these are the tabs we expect there to be there. And I can bring in, you know, the other applications that you guys use as well. In our organization, frankly, this is the only tool that I go into. I'm using lots of tools, but I'm looking at everything through this one place. Okay. Um, and it makes, uh, frankly, onboarding new employees for us that much easier um, because they're like, what do I do? What do I need to get to? I'm like, just go to Teams. <laughs> um, you can also use Teams for phone calls, for um, calendar, for chat. Um, you can talk to products using this. This search bar across the top is unbelievably powerful. When I do a search, I'm, I'm, I'm baiting this by picking an easy thing to search for, for Excel, I see every message where Excel is mentioned across all the chat channels, across all the different teams. I see every file in SharePoint across all the sites that mention Excel. Even the PDFs that mention the word Excel are in here as well. So I can see all my files across all this stuff in one place. So when I say single pane of glass, I really mean it. For me, because I'm lazy, I click on this little file tab right here, and it shows me every file I've touched and the order I've touched them in. See, across every single SharePoint site. So it's a great unifier. SharePoint already has a great search. This turbocharges it and unifies every product you have across one search, potentially. So the other thing, Dustin, if I could jump in here for a second. Uh, Please. I've worked with a couple of customers who have a third party application. It's not Microsoft, but, you know, maybe something like Zendesk where, they, where they're getting tickets or something in. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of options for integration where you can have, you know, things, uh, you know, fly up on a channel uh, yep. from another from another uh, product that you may be using. That's right. So there's Zendesk right here. Right, I could add this as a channel, except I don't have Zendesk, so I can't. And that'll be a channel in here. And um, the biggest one is just website, right? Any web-based application, I can teach this. This is the specific URL to get to, you know, if you're in the construction industry, everybody in that industry uses Procore. Um, here's how to get directly to this Procore project, um, whatever. So yeah, there's a so lot of things to bring in here. It, it looks like Dustin, you could use this, and if everyone was was working through Teams, not only would you have the formal things like the contracts and the files and that kind of stuff, but you'd have the more informal things like the the chat conversations, kind of back and forth, all in one place. So you might, you know, say, um, you know, uh, quote for, um, you know, new landscaping job or whatever the the, the, the thing was you might search for that and you might see the, the official document that you signed off on, but then you might look in and see the, um, the salesperson talking with the manager and then the, the manager saying, yeah, we'll go ahead and give them an extra three of those um, yeah. kind of in the chat. Um, and, and that's going to all be permanently archived. And, the, and even if the, um, if the employee that was in that chat uh, wasn't there that day, uh, you know, the, the, the receptionist or somebody could get in there and find that information um, instead of, you know, having to worry about getting into somebody else's email and, you know, sort of the traditional problems around that. Absolutely. Um, for us, when I go to a client, um, we always have a OneNote tab and all of us, if I bring three people to the meeting, we'll be in the same OneNote in Teams at the same time and we'll see each other typing and we'll bring up this little chat along the side of our notes and um, uh, talk, you know, uh, so, you know, stuff that's not notes with each other while we're meeting with the client. We never say anything mean, I swear. <laughs> but we, we, we use permanently that. documented. That's right. That's why we don't do it. We're scared they'll see our notes one day. Um, so yeah. So segmenting out of that, um, personally, we use Teams also for our call center. 
Like this is how we make and for our phone calls and stuff. And it's our meeting platform. Remember at the beginning, we scheduled online meetings. If I'm recording a meeting using that, um, I've got mine automatically configured to automatically go to one second here. Once a recording of a meeting is complete, I've configured teams to automatically send that recording to Microsoft stream. What is Microsoft stream? Microsoft stream is something you already own. It is YouTube for your company. Okay. And people first hear that and they go, we don't make a lot of fancy marketing videos. I don't need YouTube for my company, but you'd be amazed because you can use this to record an all hands meeting. You can use this to record, um, uh, you know, meetings that you have with clients or things like that. And the, the beauty of it is these are marketing videos, unfortunately. Oh, I've got some other videos down here though. You can see it's making a transcription of the meeting and I can search this transcription. And if it's a live meeting with people's faces, it will show each person and where they are and where they're speaking in the video. Really, really powerful. So when I'm working with a client and we're recording a meeting, I love going back to these transcripts if I'm missing some particular notes and stuff like that. It's really, really powerful. By the way, in other words, we're on a we're on a web meeting today, and uh, you know, if I was just interested in the part of this meeting where we're talking about Teams, um, I could just type Search. in Teams into the into the stream uh, tool, and then I would jump, you know, 20 minutes into the meeting. So if, if I was confused about a certain bit of process or instruction, um, I don't I don't have to go back and and sort of fumble around, or I don't have to take notes on that if it's a if it's an online meeting. So many of us today have employees that are working from home or in other other sales territories, and this would be really great. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, all right, now I'm gonna talk about my favorite favorite, Power Automate. Um, again, this is something that everybody has in their Office 365 subscription, and it is criminal if you are not um, <laughs> using this. Um, it is unbelievably powerful. If you remember when we were in SharePoint and OneDrive, um, I mentioned that there were these little buttons I could put in the screen uh, that said flow at the top, right? Power Automate in flow, um, th those are the, they're, the, they're one and the same. Uh, the idea is I can put a button on this screen using flow and make things happen, not just in SharePoint, but across all of Office 365, across all of the tools in the organization, be it Microsoft or not. For example, so now we're in Power Automate, and again, this is just an example. Um, let's pretend I made a button in uh, SharePoint that said request approval for this Word document. I build using this interface for that item in SharePoint. Go get that item in SharePoint. Go get me the, all the data about it. And then also while we're at it, get me all the information about me in Active Directory. Okay? And then I want you to start an approval process. And this is who gets it. And these are the details I want to see. And you notice when I click into that field, that details field, all the information that I grabbed a moment ago about me in Active Directory, all the information that's within that, uh, that SharePoint content is available to me now to drag, drop, and place into this step. So then I can make this approval process, and I can then say as a condition, if yes, we have, if the response was approved, then start another approval process. And if that was approved, then I want you to take that document, convert it to a PDF, and send it to this guy in an email, right? And there are hundreds and hundreds of connectors, most of which are not Microsoft products that we can use to glue things together. In our organization at Insight, um, when I put a new potential lead into our CRM, I automatically, using Flow, hear that happen and create a team site for that potential new client. I automatically, using Flow, grab their address off the internet. And then I automatically stand up a SharePoint site, tie that to the team, generate a master services agreement and a non-disclosure agreement, populate it, PDF it, put it in the SharePoint site, and then um, when I click an approve button, it sends it to that new client automatically. DocuSign is in here. 
Um, when the client signs the document, Flow hears that. It automatically closes that opportunity as one. It sends it off to my project management team to schedule, and then the project begins. Like all of that stuff is happening behind the scenes automatically using Flow. And obviously, we turbocharge it because that's what we do. But there are so many products, you know, for you to look through here. Again, most of which aren't Microsoft. And even if there's not a product on this list, we can do raw API calls. API calls are the ways that two computer programs talk to each other to push and pull data from pieces of software. It's an unbelievably powerful tool that we can use to stop um, double entry between an accounting system and everything else, or to automate a form so when somebody fills out a form to make a bunch of tasks show up on somebody else's task list. Whatever you can dream up, um, what used to take me weeks or months to write using custom software to schlep data, to create tasks, to automate things, I can use this to do in hours or days now. Ta-da! Oh, I see some. Uh, I, I see some uh, plugins there, like uh, Stripe, which is a credit card processing system. Yep. Um, Text messaging no um, is in uh, here. I've had clients use that. Sorry, keep going. Um, you know, of course, the, the document signing systems, um, you know, a, a lot of us have, uh, you know, maybe uh, shipping and receiving uh, any integrations with UPS that you're familiar with or FedEx. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we've pulled uh, tracking information. Um, I have one client, whenever there's an exception, send them a text message. You know what I mean? Things like that to one of the packages that they shipped. Um, and we run through that once an hour. Um, all sorts of uses for when you assign somebody a task, um, text them this. When somebody uploads a file to an FTP site, take that FTP file, open the Excel file, iterate for each row of data, and then put it in this database. Even that sort of stuff. You name it. Um, one of the examples we were talking about before this call began with a few people that got on early, um, beyond this, and then I gotta switch topics again. Um, I, one of my favorite things to do is I'll go to a finance department and I'll say, all right, go grab me somebody uh, from you know, uh, account, accounts receivable. And I'll say, every time you get an email from accounts payable, Take the email if it has an attachment. I want you to grab the attachment, and I can teach Power Automate to draw. I can teach you to draw. This is where the address is on these invoices. This is where the due date is. This is where the amount is, see? And then it can automatically, whenever that account gets an email, figure out all the main details and then put it in your finance system. So really, really powerful stuff um, you know, that this thing is capable of. They just added a feature last week called UI flows, and then I'll move on, where I can trigger doing things on somebody's desktop. So if you're using some old desktop application, and once a day, once a week, you need to do a file export to upload to something else, you can have it uh, you know, automatically click around your screen for you by you recording yourself. Um, and then teaching it the variables that you need. It's really, really powerful. So quick, a great, go ahead. Uh, quick question, Dustin. Is there an option, um, let's say you're a, a service business and you need to, um, you know, you want to send a text message to a, a customer 24 hours before you come on site for some sort of a, a service on a piece of equipment. Um, is that something that can be done with this that integrates with your calendar? If you have a calendar built out with, with scheduled visits that it, automatically send some sort of a text message in advance? Abs absolutely, absolutely. Um, and beyond that, um, if you install Power Automate on your phone, you can do geofencing. So, you know, text them 24 hours before based on my calendar, and then text them again with, when I'm within five miles of the address. So you could do that. You know what I mean? To, to let them know I'm, I'm five minutes away if you have Power Automate running on your phone. Or let me know if this person leaves early, stuff like that. So, yeah, I can do your example. I just wanted to one-up you. No, just kidding. Okay, that's, that's great. That's great. <laughs> we got about eight, we eight got minutes about eight, left. Ten minutes to, to wrap up. Uh, till it's uh, 1049. All right, so I'm going to show one more thing. 
and then let you guys ask any questions you might want. There's so many more things we can show. You know, I barely touched on that Power Apps application. Again, this is a replacement for FileMaker, Access, any old software that you use. It's a tool that you already own that we can use to build really, really beautiful applications that make use of tablets and phones and the web and everything else. So, you know, we may have that come up later. We've got actually a meeting for that on March 11th, I believe, set up. Teams, February 27th, we've got a meeting about that as well. But, you know, this is just one of many uh, power apps that can be built using nothing more than drag and drop software. And it's got all the abilities that you would expect a, you know, full-blown application to have. Um, the last thing I want to end with is Power Apps, uh, Power BI. Power BI is extra. You do not own this. It's 10 bucks a month per user. You can also pay uh, a la carte price. We can talk about that later. But the idea is it takes all the systems that you have, brings the data from those into one place, and then allows me to do actionable insights based on that data. So I can teach it. For example, and what you're seeing here is hooked up to uh, four data sources for nonprofits, okay? And you're going to see me type in here in a second. I can make charts and graphs and pretty reports, and that's awesome. But I can teach it what words mean. When I say donor, this is what a donor is. I can use it to clean up data. It's unbelievably powerful. And I can type, and I'm just making this up, show me, show a map of donors. And there we go. Here's all the donors for this organization, all their data sources brought together in one place. Show me donations by employer. None of this was pre-made. I did test these to make sure they worked, but none of them are pre-made. There we go. Oh, uh, in July 2017. Perfect. Show me average donation amount. Perfect. By month. See, and then I can take any of these and pin it to a dashboard and watch them change in real time. You know, we use this for predictive analysis. Um, we use this to discover trends. There's even a Y button in the reports that we build. So, like, this is a fake version of the reports that we use internally. If this was all the money we had, I'd be very sad. But these are the reports that we use ourselves on a weekly basis. And if I'm looking, uh, you know, for example, at, uh, oh, look at that, you know, Laura or Tim billed way more hours this week than last week. Explain this increase to me. Oh, it's cut off a little bit. He spent way more time doing updates to export scripts and, you know, and this other thing. That's why he billed way more hours. See, so it'll work with your data when I teach it your lingo. It's an unbelievably powerful tool. And that's just scratching the, scratching the surface. Each one of these things is, can, be a, uh, can be a webinar in and of itself. But with that, um, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Uh, like I said, there's another one February 27th where we're focusing just on Teams, and another one March 11th where we're focusing on Dynamics and Power Apps, the application development side of things. But uh, hopefully um, – you, this, uh, you know, got the juices flowing for everybody about how much power they have in the tools that they own. Uh, questions? Well, I, I think we're all really excited about this, and I can't <laughs> wait to, to getting into those next webinars and uh, probably scheduling a few more uh, with you. I know we've had several clients um, reach out, and, and basically the way we work together is that Ian Computers will work to set up these environments for you. Um, you know, get get some of the raw functionality there, and then um, our customers can engage with you, Dustin, uh, directly to do some of the more advanced uh, customization that you've been you've been showing off here. Um, we can work together on training, uh, depending on on what level of training we're talking about. But uh, just a, a ton of opportunity. I mean, these are these are big, uh, relatively complicated um, apps, um, but you know, when you think about how complicated things are when they don't talk to one another and yeah. how much we have to do, um, you know, uh, you know, copying and pasting and, 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 and that kind of stuff, uh, these apps can just save a ton of time once you spend some time to, to link everything together. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's just a, such an opportunity for people to, 
um, you know, really take their business from a 1997 type operational level to, to uh, you know, a, a 2020 operational level. Absolutely. Yeah, there's so much great stuff in here. This is me bringing um, everything we've talked about together in one place, Power BI, Power Apps, all in one thing. Here we're analyzing a company's phone calls and we're saying this sales guy, David So, he spends 37% of his calls listening and 63% talking. Here's a transcript of his phone call. And when he was talking to this person, how much of that call the other person was taking positively based on the inflection of their voice and versus negatively. And then these are all the words he's supposed to say on the call and when he's saying them. You know what I mean? So the possibilities are endless. Um, crawl, walk, run will teach you all how to um, fish so that, you know, you can be empowered to use as much of this uh, stuff that you have out of Office 65 yourself as possible. And then when it comes time to replacing software, gluing systems together, we're there to support you in that, those efforts as well. That sounds great. Cool. Anything else? I don't know how to end these. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is awesome. I can only end it with like some clapping, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> lots of good stuff here. So oh, um, thank, thank you, you so much, Dustin, for your time today. And, uh, always. you know, I think all of us are energized to find ways to, um, to, to put this type of good information to work in our businesses. Terrific. Yep. February 27th, Teams, Deep Dive. Hopefully be there and I'll talk to you it's then or sooner. Yep. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye. Mm.